morning I want to talk about uh, the next slide. Why, or maybe the one after actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's my siblings and family, which is cool. You probably recognise some of you. Um, yes, yeah, so this morning I want to talk about why do we need this kind of hope? About where it comes from and about what hope in Jesus brings us. Because we are made in God's image, we are created. We imagine, we dream, and we plan for the future. We are hardwired for hope. You and I are always putting, uh, you and I are always putting our hope into something. If we listen, we will realize that we communicate with the language of hope all the time. I sure hope it doesn't rain today. I hope she isn't mad at me. I hope I can do what I promise. Uh, I hope Wellington Lions win the shield match. <laughs> I hope Hayden doesn't preach for two on Sunday. <laughs> I hope that all you can eat buffet isn't just a salad bar. I hope they can get along for once. I hope the sickness isn't something serious. I hope when I get home, there'll be something to eat. I hope I can do something worthwhile with my life. I hope what I believe proves to be true. I am convinced that the language of hope is on our lips so much because we live in a world where hope seems temporary or often dashed in our work, in our families, as citizens and in our own personal lives, we all deal with so much broken hope. It's not unusual for the things in which we willingly place our hope in to fail us. In fact, we can get to the place where we are afraid to hope anymore because we are sure we will be disappointed once again. It's well reported that the Jews held in concentration camps during World War II that the ones that had not given up on hope had a much better survival. Hope is important because God created our lives to be propelled and directed by hope. We are excited about possibilities, new ideas, new fulfilling relationships, and he meant our capacity of hope to be the drive us especially to him. Here's one of the things I love about the Advent season and the Christmas story. If you look and listen this season, you will rem and it will remind you where true hope is to be found and not to be found. Do you uh, buy fresh Christmas trees? A fresh cut Christmas tree. It's a beautiful pine aroma. Should remind you that you can't put your hope in created things. Like everything in creation, the beauty of that tree will fade. It's inevitable that you'll find yourself dragging a dry, dry tree to the compost pile, leaving a trail of dried out pine needles behind you. Creation decays. Creation and creatures will die, and hope in them will die along with them. Uh, creation can't be the source of our hope. People celebrate, or people you celebrate Christmas with can't be the source of your hope either. Because if you know them well, you know they are weak and you be just like you. And at Christmas we are often reminded that we can't get along with our family. In fact, you may be hoping you don't have to see your in-laws for at least one more year. <laughs> People can't be the source of our hope. Stuff can't be the source of our hope, even though every year the advertising tries to convince us of this new thing that we can buy that will make life somehow better and the people on the advert always look so happy and young and content. I mean, who doesn't want a robot that will do the vacuuming for you? 
<laughs> Sadly, our satisfaction only lasts days before we are hoping for the next thing that is tempting us. Hope will never fulfill, be fulfilled. Stuff, stuff can't be the source of our hope. Even holiday cheer can't deliver. Because we all know that when the season is over, we will return to the realities of the world we live in. They talk about the spirit of Christmas like it's a feeling. But feelings come and go, feelings can't be the source of hope. Thankfully, behind all the consumer and secular driven message, there is another story. The Christmas story. And I'm not talking about Elf, or Die Hard, or Love Actually. The Bible Christmas story reminds us that hopelessness is the only doorway to true and eternal hope. It's only when you realise that there are so many false hopes to discover. Oh, sorry. It's only when you realise that there are so many false hopes and discover what God, in holy love, offering you is the person and work of His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. That's when you realise that you know that the true hope isn't a thing. It's a person, and His name is Emmanuel, His name is Jesus. During the Advent, the weeks leading up to Christmas, we had a time to examine the hopes we have. The hopes we have in created things, the hopes in people, the hopes in stuff, and things and feelings. Things we need or want, or even hope we have in things for other people. All humanity is searching for a hope that will deliver. Millions of people at this time Hope for good, but for food, and are starving to death. Millions of people pray for peace and will die in war. So, having a hope in something eternal and someone eternally loving that will put all things right and truly deliver on what is promised and hoped for is the key. However, in this world at this time, these hopes for the fundamental things of life, shelter, food and water, and peace are dashed. The danger of having all our hopes into things which may not happen is the things don't go the way we want them can lead to hopelessness. So we hope for something greater and more powerful that can overcome all of the obstacles. We really want to see someone Say, we really need someone to save us. A saviour who can heal the sick. Someone who can feed the hungry when there's not enough. Someone who can bring peace to people. And just imagine if he had the power over nature and could calm a storm, how good would that be? And then, when we are that, in that hopeful territory, we are hoping for something more than any earthly king could ever provide. They would probably have to be gone. That hope is not new. For thousands of years, People have hoped for that and called on God to help. And the prophet Isaiah came along with a wonderful prophecy, a word of hope in the darkness. There's a couple of Bible names in here, so you just have to excuse me if I don't say them right. <laughs> Nevertheless, the time of darkness and despair will not go on forever. The land of Zebu and Nephtali will be humble. But there will be a time in the future when Galilee of the Gentiles, which rides along the road 
that runs between the Jordan and the sea will be filled with glory. The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. For those who live in the land of deep darkness, a light will shine. You enlarge the nation of Israel and its people will rejoice. They will rejoice before you, its people rejoice on the heart, at the hearts, like when the warriors divide upon them. For you will break the yoke of the slavery and lift the heavy burden from their shoulders. You will break the oppressor's rock, just as you did when you destroyed the army of Midian. The boots of the warriors in the uniform, blood stained by war, will be burned. They will be fueled for the fire. For a child is born to us. A son is given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. This government and its peace will never end. He will rule with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor David for all of eternity. The passionate commitment of the Lord of heaven's armies will make this happen. We pray that God's kingdom will come because if Sashvina does, and there is no greed or selfishness or sin, I am sure there would be no salvation or war or loneliness. We see glimpses of God's kingdom breaking in all the time that remind us that we have hope now and for the future. We have examined where our hopes cannot rest. And for most of us, we have discovered that our hope can rest in our Saviour and King Jesus. We know that our hope won't turn into hopelessness. So what do we do with this hope we have in Jesus? We hold on to it, knowing that God is always there with us. He doesn't want to let us go. We share with people around us, knowing that if we search, we can find God with us, and he gives us the hope to keep going. He's there with us when we are afraid, and he overcame every hope-crushing obstacle. As our worship director, you better believe I've got a song to finish with. <laughs> and the lyrics of the song, uh, they say this. I have this hope in the depths of my soul. In the fire and in the flame, you are with me and you won't let go. We're going to listen to that now. Romans chapter 15, verse 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with the hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Last year we stayed till after breakfast and spent a bit more time together and headed home for lunch. But we were, you know, this time we were like, we, we love our church, you know, we love this church, we love you guys. And we thought, man, we, we so want to hear Liam preaching <laughs> so, and the youth leading. And so we, we just we shot back this morning. Uh, so glad we did. Well done, Liam. And um, thank you for leading the worship team this year. Uh, so Liam's a young man and he's done a fantastic job of leading the rest of the team. So uh, let me pray for you, and um, yeah, good job. Lord God, we thank you for the gifts and talents you give us, and we just thank you for a new generation that are sharing those gifts you've given with all of us. We thank you for this message of hope, and for the reminder that there are so many things that 
we place our trust in them, our hopes will be dashed. Um, and Lord, just thank you for the reminder that you are the one true king who fulfills our hopes and won't let us down. Um, through the fire and through the rain, uh, you will always be with us in prison. And we thank you for your goodness and your presence with Liam. I just pray your continued blessing on him. May he grow from strength to strength and in confidence um, so that I can have another break. <laughs> <laughs>